This, 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 this show is brought to you by Safety FM. Sam Goodman, The Hop Nerd, asking you to head over to www.thehopnerd.com for all of your human and organizational performance needs, from consultation to training and everything in between, from hot fundamentals to learning team facilitation to culture change planning. We help you out with your human and organizational performance journey. Again, head over to www.thehopnerd.com or send me an email to sam at the hop nerd. Hello, howdy. Hi, everybody. It is Sam Goodman, the Hop Nerd here, bringing you another episode of the Hop Nerd live stream, the live show. How are things going for you? I hope things are going absolutely, absolutely, absolutely fantabulous, fabulous, wherever you find yourself, whatever neck of the woods you find yourselves in today. I hope things are going absolutely great for you. Things are going wonderful here, uh, the best that they can be. Um, again, I'm Sam Gooden. I'm the Hopner. Thank you for allowing me to be the tour guide, your tour guide to the apocalypse. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for following along. Thank you for continuing to have this conversation with me. The phone lines are open for it. Oh, 712-5219. You can give us a call. We can give that shot. We can see how that works. Um, I'll be honest with you. I'm squinting. I'm squinting at a much smaller screen than what I'm used to. Uh, and I'll show you why. We, we're all uh, very, very well aware of uh, – I'm trying to read all my little tabs. and I, I can't read them because my screen's really, really tiny. And I, I promise you I'm going somewhere with this story. But it's this. It's the fact that we're all dealing with this whole working from home thing, right? Uh, those of you that know me know that I have – an amazing, an amazing little girl named Avery, and she's here at the studio, the fabulous Hopner Studios, hanging out with us today. And here you go. Let's let's take a look. Let's see if you can uh, if you can see her. There she is. You can barely see her. Her butt's hanging out. She, <laughs> but she's hanging out over there on the couch with us. She's watching. She's watching some stuff on the main screen. So she she commandeered my main screen. So I'm not getting to uh, I'm not getting to watch and see what's. Uh, I, I, it's hard for me to see. I guess that's what I'm telling you. So I'm, I'm, I'm pulling up your comments. I'm pulling up all that stuff. I'm following multiple feeds here at once. If I miss something, I apologize. If you throw something in the comments and I miss it, text it to me. If you really super duper want to talk about it, I'll be happy to talk about it. Again, always feel free. Give us a call. Give us a like. Give us a share. Uh, if you like this stuff, if you love this stuff, if you want to see this show keep happening, please continue to share. I greatly, greatly appreciate it when you share this stuff. Uh, it's awesome. I, I thoroughly enjoy it. Hopefully things are going well in your neck of the woods. This will be a pretty normal live stream, I hope, today. Uh, we'll get through this thing. We'll continue to have this conversation. Then we'll call it a day. And then I'm going to go back to uh, back to being a recluse and back to hiding in my little cubbyhole here in Phoenix, Arizona. I tell you this all the time. It's super awesome because this is this is the one little bit of the day that I get to get out and kind of wander around. And when I say wander around, we we go down the stairs. Uh, we get into our car uh, in our garage, and then we take off down the street, about 10 minutes down the street, to our wonderful Hopnerd Studios here. Right, Of course, we built this right before the apocalypse happened. <laughs> and then here we are, right? And then we spend some time here, and then we go home, and it sucks. Let's just be honest. Let's just completely level with each other and just say that it sucks. Um, I'm continuing to rant, and I'm going to continue to make that that call that we demand better information from those that lead us, from our governments, uh, from those folks around us, from those organizations that we are supposed to be looking up to for answers. Uh, I think that we should demand greater information from those folks, and I think post-apocalypse – we need to demand uh, some transparency into how things occurred because, uh, again, I, I really hope that one of the biggest things that we can take away from this is learning. Uh, and I feel that we're going to learn many, many, many things if we allow ourselves to once we get through this thing. So that's what I'm hoping for. Again, I think it's really important that we continue to drive that, that we need to continue to push for better information because I just don't see it. 
I'm sorry. I just don't see it. I haven't seen any bit of information yet, nothing yet, that really tells me that it's worth shutting down our entire economy for right now. I'm sorry. I just don't. That's, that might be an unpopular opinion, um, but that's that's just what I'm seeing. Uh, I, we're seeing a lot of stuff that's indicating. The stuff that we have seen is saying that, well, you know, if you get this, uh, then you probably will survive. There's a 95% chance that you'll survive and be okay. Uh, and yeah, that's what we know about it. We know that the flu is much deadlier. We know that there are other things that are much, much, much deadlier. Um, but this is the one, and we want to basically destroy the vast majority of small businesses in the country. We want to completely cripple and shut down the economy, and we want to lock folks in their house, and we want to have a catastrophic panic pour throughout our nation. We want to have record unemployment. I don't know. Seems kind of fishy to me, but that's just me. I would encourage you to do your own research. I would encourage you to go out and find your own answers. Don't listen to what I say. I'm a dumbass. I'll be completely honest with you. Right. Uh, and uh, just go listen and dig and find and, and believe what you want to believe. But the more that I'm locked away, the more that I have the opportunity to sit and think. Think. <laughs> The less I believe what the official story is, the less that I believe uh, really what the news is saying. I'm not challenging that, that that the way that you stop the spread of this stuff is by social distancing. I think that's probably pretty wise. That's probably pretty smart. I think that there's a lot of ways to do that. Um, I think that all that stuff is pretty good. Uh, but again, I don't know. To the point of shutting down the entire world. Uh, on you know, especially when you see stuff that shows the vast majority of the stuff shows that the kind of the peak fatality rate for this is like five percent. That's kind of sort of small. Let's just be honest. That's small in the grand scheme of things. Let's just let's just throw that out there right now. Uh, but there, my rant's over for the day, and now we'll get back into the normal stuff. I'm going to continue that rant, and I'm going to circle back around here and throw back in the positive stuff that while we're dealing with this crap. It's a time for helping, not hiding, right? So we need to continue that. We need to continue that message no matter uh, where this is coming from, how this is manifesting, you know, all the problems that we're seeing from this, whether it's coronavirus related, COVID-19 related or not. And I think a lot of the problems that we're seeing probably aren't really related. I think it's just stuff that's people are kind of manifesting on their own. But – we still need to help. We still need to help each other. We still need to reach out. We still need to make, have those conversations. I got several phone calls over the past couple of days of that same stuff. I got one last night. I got a couple this morning. Folks just reaching out saying, Hey, how you doing? Just wanted to check on you. Make sure everything's going good for you. Things are going good for me. Everything's going well in, in my neck of the woods. Um, just wanted to make sure and see if you needed anything, see how things were treating you, all that kind of stuff. And that's awesome. That's an awesome thing. Again, that's so powerful. That is so powerful when you actually get that, right? That's so powerful when you actually get people to have that conversation with you. I think it's awesome. It's just awesome because people will reach out to you and they'll say, I care about you. That's huge. That's massive. So again, helping, not hiding. And this kind of goes back to the entire point that I'm kind of ranting on here uh, right at the beginning uh, is that it's time to be prepared, not Panicked, and I shared. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I shared an awesome JP Sears video on my LinkedIn profile. I haven't really shared it to anything else yet. I've been, I've been slacking. I'll, I'll be honest with you, I've been slacking, and that's on purpose on some of my social media because I've been investing a lot of time here, hanging out with you. That's part of it, and then the other part of it is. I've just been enjoying time with my family. I'm going to write something. I, I was thinking about that this morning. I was scribbling some notes, so you can, you can bolo for that. You can be on the lookout for that. I'm going to actually write some stuff talking about that, about my decision over the past couple of weeks, where most of us have, you know, I've seen that it's been a really good opportunity for folks to actually kind of, kind of really ratchet down and pump out a lot more content. Uh, and I guess this is pumping out content. I feel like I have ratcheted down in this in the live stream space. Um, I've continued to pump this stuff out every single day for going on like 20 days ish now, um, ish. I don't know. I still haven't counted them because I've got better things to do. Uh, but, where some folks have seen it as the opportunity to get more work done, I've seen it as the opportunity to really just cherish time with my family, right? I, I've shown you the glimpse over here of the of the couch, right? I've got some camera angle now the face on the couch. I'm working on those because kind of, again, talking to studio stuff, making this big shindig circus thing here. Um, but so, you know, I've seen it as the opportunity to spend more time with Avery. I'd rather, you know, if I'm home and I'm, I'm already working on stuff, I'm working from home. So it's not like I'm not working. I'm telecommuting. I'm doing stuff. Um why would I want to add more to that right now when I can take this opportunity to recharge, refuel, and, and re-up on my family time? 
that's what I'm doing with it. I'll be honest with you. That's completely what I'm doing with it. I'm spending the time to, to, to better our live streams. So I'm working on that. I'm spending time to, uh, get stuff caught up at the day job, right? And I'm spending it on Avery. I'm spending it on Avery. I'm spending it on Jarrell. I'm spending it on my family. You know, I'm spending it on that stuff. That, that's where I'm really investing that increased bandwidth at right now is on my family rather than kind of doubling down and pouring more content out. I'm sorry. I told you that yesterday. I've read a lot of stuff where podcast views are down or views, listens are down. Live stream stuff is down. Everything's down right now. And I hope it's because people are doing the same thing that I'm doing. I hope it, that, I hope it's that, that people are starting to realize that let's, I'm stuck at home. I can only watch so much of this. I only listen to so much of this. I only listen to so much of Sam ranting about stupid stuff. Let's disconnect for a while and spend some time with our family. We'll go back and listen to that stuff tomorrow, but let's spend some time with our family. And I think that's a great thing. I don't think that that's a bad thing at all. And again, that's coming from a podcaster. That's coming from a live streamer. That's coming from a, uh, I guess you can call me a personality. I don't know. I'm not going to use the I word because I don't consider myself an influencer in any way, shape or form. Um, but I think that that's, that's awesome, right? I think that that's, it's good. You have to seize that opportunity and that's what I've been doing with it. So I've had a bunch of folks reach out. So kind of, kind of in line with that conversation. I've had lots of folks reach out to me and say, Hey, you know, what's going on? I haven't seen you, uh, haven't seen you posting this or posting that. I haven't seen any of this stuff happening lately. What's going on with you? Are you okay? Is everything good? Are you, you running away? And I'm like, no, I'm not running away. Promise. Super duper promise. I'm not. I'm, I'm still here. Still going to continue on. Um, I'm just taking some time. I'm just taking a little bit of time to reconnect, uh, Spend some extra time with Avery, some extra time with the family. I'm spending time reading. I'm spending time getting caught up on stuff that I haven't had the opportunity to, to, to get caught up on. Um, and that's really where a lot of my creative process happens. Anyway, I'll, I'll, come, I'll be completely honest with you, completely transparent with you. That's how I really get tuned in uh, when it's time, right, when, when I really need to produce. Uh, I've got to have some some stuff floating around in my head. I've got to have some time to chill out like this morning, right? Me and Avery got here to the studio this will give you some uh, a pro glimpse into the Goodman, the Hopner, the Sam Goodman creative method. All crazy as it is, right? Super creative, not. Uh, but <laughs> what, what I did is, you know, we just spent the morning, right? We got up, we made breakfast. There was a couple moments where I'm, I was, I told you I was thinking about writing this stuff, and I'm like, okay, well, I want to write an article, and I want to focus in on what I was just telling you that you know, using this to kind of downtime, even though it's not, to actually reconnect and, and focus on relationships and focus on kind of the building blocks of the creative stuff that you need to really produce and how I'm using that to get caught up and kind of focus on things that I haven't had the opportunity to focus on really since probably December-ish. Since the podcast started, oh, again, I'm going full bones honesty here. Um, it's been intense. I've spent a lot of time buried in the computer, a lot of time uh, at home and, and now here at the studio. So you have to kind of re-up those creative r reservoirs at some point or you burn yourself out. So for me, it's been this little bit of time. So I was thinking about how I'm going to structure this article, and I, I, I was like, okay, I'm going to go down and get my computer. And I caught myself halfway down the stairs. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> and Avery's, Avery's upstairs. We're, we're watching a movie this morning, having a little bit of breakfast. I've got my work computer already open, doing some stuff there on my day job computer. I'm like, I'll go down and get my other computer. And I can have both of them going and I can be doing stuff back and forth. And then, so I'm like, no, not going to happen. I'm like, oh, I can post some stuff. And I, I ended up posting some stuff. I, I, I will share that with you too. I ended up posting something this morning that I thought was hilarious and very true. Uh, but, I just used it as an opportunity to kind of teach myself a lesson. I'm like, no, I don't need to do that. I need to stop. I need to, I need to calm the F down and I need to sit here and enjoy the time that I'm, I'm getting with my daughter watching this movie. I've already got work going on. Why add more work to it right now? Um, let's just enjoy this. Let's enjoy this moment, laying in bed, watching a movie, eating breakfast, doing a little bit of work without adding extra work to it. Just because I, I use, I know that I have the capacity to do it, but should I, right? How's it really going to affect me in the long run? And that's what I quickly realized is that it's back to that conversation we were just having is that those creative reservoirs are not limitless and you have to have some downtime and you have to have some time to recharge the batteries. You got to have the time to read. You got to have the time to research. You got to have the time to spend time with those that you love and care about. You got to have time to go out and live some experiences and all that kind of sort of stuff. And that's extra hard now. 
because you're not getting to get out and experience things. We're locked in the house. So all of our experiences are distanced. All of our experiences are through reading, through listening, through watching. Um, so things are kind of hard to do that right now. Anyways, so I caught myself and that's where I'm going. That, that's ultimately what I'm going to end up writing at some point. I'm going to write that article over the next few weeks. Um, and what I've done is in here for, for those folks out there that are kind of following the same path, I've talked to a few that are following a similar path to me. They're like, I'm just using this as the opportunity to recharge. Likes are down, listens are down, all that stuff down right now anyways. So people are using it as the opportunity to learn new skills, to recharge those batteries, to read a book, to build new content kind of in their head, right? They're not just producing and pumping out. And that's where my pro tip comes in is I just kind of went back to the old school. I kind of got the notebooks out, right? I, I pulled out the notebooks and I'm jotting down ideas. And I'm letting them actually soak and stew and, and really think about them a little bit. And I think that's been awesome. I, I've got so much crap swirling around in my head right now um, that I want to do both content-wise, both live stream-wise, with podcast-wise, all of that kind of sort of stuff. I've, I've got all that stuff kind of floating around in my head right now. But I just don't feel like it's a good time to just continue to pump stuff out. I feel like if I pump it out, I'm going to diminish quality because I need to use this time to actually recharge my batteries and then come out full swinging, right? So you'll notice my posts are down. That's a long story to tell you that my posts are down um, to maybe one Tuesday a day. My, my response rate is a little down. Again, back to I'll respond to you when I get to you right now, just to be completely honest with you, because there's other things going on in my world. There's more important things going on in my world, and I think that's a good lesson to share with everybody is that you need to recognize – when there are more important things going on in your world. And for right now, it's continuing to focus on spending time with this lovely lady that's over here, right? Spending, spending time with this one who's hanging out over here on the couch, watching some uh, Netflix, being very patient with me today. And that, that will wear off pretty soon. You'll see her wandering the screen. You'll see her pop in here and start piddling with cameras pretty soon. Uh, but it's that. It's spending time with those folks. It's, it's, it's just working on stuff really here, right? And, and, and I should probably pull that up and show you, you know, it was saying here, right? Working on stuff here more than it is just pumping out content, writing articles and trying to pump out crap just to meet some invisible quota that we usually all have, right? Uh, so that's really where I've been. That's what I've been up to. I've really been focusing on, on me. I've been focusing on, on ideas for the channel. I've been focusing on ideas for the live stream, ideas for my, my kind of content that I normally pump out. I've really been focusing on that. Uh, that's been my goal for a very long time. And you can hear me talk a little bit about that. If you go tune in to the Jay Allen show, I, I was right yesterday. It did come out today. So that, that's awesome. Um, you should go listen to that. Jay's awesome. Jay, the Jay Allen show is awesome in general, but you got, you get me now. Not saying that makes it any better, but <laughs> I'm there. So if you like me, it's probably a good place to go listen to me. Um, and I, and I share some of that too, that that's been a lot of the goal since day one is just trying to pump out quality content. That's my number one focus. I don't, we can all pretend and like, I won't sit here and say like, I don't give a shit about likes or listens or views. I do. Obviously, I think we all do. If we're pumping out stuff, we hope people see it. Right. We really hope people see it. So I would lie to you and say that I don't care about that because we all do. Um, but that's never been the main goal for me. That That's never been the main goal. The main goal for me has always been quality. Uh, and I share that there, not to give too much away, but I share that that's always been kind of the goal is that the goal is that I, I produce quality stuff that people want to steal. And I'm happy with it. If they steal it, the only rule is if you steal it, you have to make it a little bit better, right? I hope you steal it. I hope you reuse it. I hope you put it in your presentations. I hope you reshare it. I hope you do all that kind of fun stuff with it. Just make it a little bit better. And then send me a copy of it so I can start using it too. That's kind of always been the rule that I've, <laughs> I've, I've, I was taught very early in our profession is that, that you can steal, you can borrow, but you have to make better, right? That's all the only, that's the only real, that's the only real rule. Um, so that's where I've been. That's what I've got going on. That's some stuff for you to look for coming from me pretty soon is I, I do plan on doing that. I do plan on writing that article. Um, I'm scribbling away on my notebook, kind of writing some structured stuff, trying to figure it out, uh, what I want to do there. Uh, I'm a writer, to be honest with you. I spent a lot of time writing. I've, I've, I've done that quite a bit. Um, for those of you that continue to ask, no, there is no book in the works right now. Stop asking. I don't have the time. 
<laughs> you don't want you don't want several hundred pages of me ranting and rambling about stuff. Promise, promise. At least not yet. Um, but but there's that, that's that's kind of the plan. That's kind of the stuff. I just wanted to share that because that is something that I've continued to get quite a bit of. Is hey, where you at? What's going on? Uh, you know, uh, and you know I've, I'm I'm used to seeing you post like thirty times a day on LinkedIn, and now, and now you're only down to two or three. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I guess. I guess that's the only thing I can say is sorry. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. That's what's been going on. That's all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm struggling. My, again, I always, I always rant about this stupid computer, but I'm struggling with it again today. It's not wanting to load your comments. So if I'm missing anything from you, I apologize. Do me a favor. If you're trying to get through, um, if, if I'm missing comments from you, Jump over and just shoot me a text. That's a really easy way to get me is to just shoot me a text. Um, super easy, right? Super easy way is just to text me. Uh, you can text me at 480 You can call me 480-712-5219. Again, I like doing this just because I think it's a really good way to continue to bring our community together, uh, especially with everything that's been going on. Over the past little bit, things have been pretty wild, right? Things have been pretty wild. Um, so it's kind of nice to just have this conversation, right? It's super nice just to have this conversation and spend time with you and, uh, spend time here in the studio with Avery, spend time in the studio with Jarrell when he's here. Uh, he's one of those essential workers that's out there doing essential worker stuff right now. Um, that's, that's required, uh, you know, to be out and about. He's, he's in healthcare. You know, that is Jarrell Belonghi RN. We have him on the show every now and again and talk COVID-19 and talk all that stuff and answer your questions. Hopefully we'll get to do that again pretty soon. Hopefully very, very, very soon we'll get to do that. Um, cause it's fun for me. I just enjoy having him on. I think it's a blast. Just, you know, when, when you can kind of mix, mix your two worlds, this makes things to me, it makes things that much cooler when we get to spend time together here and at home and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, that's what's been going on in my world. Hope things are going well for you. Shoot us a text, 480-877-0155. You can call us, 480-712-5219. Do me a favor, head over to the website, www.thehopnerd.com. Follow along on all things social media at The Hop Nerd, except for Twitter, because it is super duper. I keep saying special, but it's kind of dumb, I guess. It's freaking Twitter. Nobody likes Twitter. That It makes me kind of do that. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't Twitter a lot. I'll be honest with you. I don't get on there and do much Twittering. So, but you can check it out. It's the Hop Nerd One. I'm over there too. Um, follow along on YouTube. That's a really easy way to find us and watch these live streams and see all these kind of video things. We're really focusing hard on putting out more video content. I put out a couple things, kind of testing the waters. I got a couple things in the reserves that we're playing with and tweaking right now that you'll probably see come out pretty soon. I like these like little sit down conversation videos. Those are fun. I like these little funny videos. That's kind of my favorite thing to do is just piece together. Some little little funny vids. That's what I like doing. So you'll probably see more of those things happening, and just other kind of YouTubey things, uh, and really a lot. Again, a lot more being invested in the live stream. So please head over there, follow along on YouTube. It's just the Hop Nerd. You can look for our logo, this logo down there. There you go. I always forget it's backwards, right down there. And you can uh, you can follow along with that logo. You just see that anywhere. You know it's pretty much us. That's unless somebody steals it and it's kind of faking us. I haven't seen that yet. <laughs> I'll say that and that's going to happen, but that that's us right there. Go follow along. Enjoy the content, all that kind of stuff. I hope you like it. I hope you love it. I hope you got to have more of it. Just do me a favor. When you see these live streams, share them, like them, comment on them. That, that helps us so much. I, I can't tell you how much that helps us um, keep this thing going. It helps us keep the lights on. It helps us keep the, keep the nice, cool blue and purple lights on. Uh, it's really nice. And Avery loves it because it helps keep the, the electricity on so she can watch her Netflix over here while I'm over here ranting and, and all that. So help a poor live streamer out. Contribute by liking, sharing, and subscribing. That's what we're really asking, <laughs> asking you to do. But you can also head over to www.thehopner.tv. And you can watch us live there too. So that's kind of cool. If you want to go ahead over and watch us on the website, I don't have that pulled up because my freaking computer never works that well. It's frozen right now. It's, it's continuing to freeze on me and not load your comments. I'm trying to monitor about four different Facebook pages <laughs> that we stream this thing to and, a, you know, YouTube and then Twitch and then a couple other things I'm trying to monitor as well. And I'm just, I'm struggling with this computer. At some point, I've, I've got, I've got an equipment list, right? You know, I've got, I've got a list of equipment that I'm ordering, that I'm buying in the kind of the order that I want to buy that in. 
Uh, and unfortunately, new MacBook, new desk computer for here is very low on that list. I'll just level with you. There's much other cooler things on there that I want to buy. So that's much lower on the list. At some point, I'm just going to probably go buy like a hundred dollar Chromebook or something or an iPad. That's, I guess that's worse if I buy an iPad. That's more expensive. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> I'll buy like a hundred, hundred fifty dollar Walmart computer just to sit here and, and browse at Facebook. Um, at some point, at some point in the future, again, there's just much cooler things. Plus, I wouldn't have the opportunity to, to bash Apple, even though I love them. I love you, Apple, but I still bash you because this thing sucks. Um, I wouldn't have the opportunity to bash Apple that much, right? If, <laughs> if, if I had a different, different computer, then I'd get to bash Dell or whoever makes that thing. Who knows, right? Whatever, whatever brand I end up buying at some point. Um, and we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But let's jump in to today's news. That's enough of me storytelling. I'm sure I've got like five or six other stories before we get done here. But let's jump into the news. Let's see what's happening over here. Again, this is your show. Shoot us a text. 480-770-1554-807-125219 is an easy way to give us a call. Jump into the comments. I'm trying to read them. I'll see if I see them. Hopefully, let's, let's see if you get through. You can always send us an email, sam at thehopner.com, thehopner.gmail.com, all that stuff. You can go interact with the bot on the website if you want to get a hold of us. That way, we can always do that too. So that's what's going on in my world. I hope to hear things are going well in your world right now. Things have been kind of wild and crazy for us just from being locked up. And uh, let's see what's going on out there in the real world. Let's, let's do that. Let's jump into today's news, see what's happening out there, see if there's any cool articles that we want to take a look at. Um, Navarro warned 1.2 million souls could be lost due to coronavirus reports. New York virus death hits new high, but hospitalizations slow. Uh, long lines drive through voting as Wisconsin voters cast ballots. That's interesting. We're seeing drive through voting. I know I've seen a lot of that, a lot of those things just delayed, which is pretty, pretty interesting. Um, Trump hits at cutting World Health Organization funding over coronavirus handling says they really blew it. Interesting. I've heard a lot of reports saying that who has not done such a great job with a lot of this stuff. And look, I'm sorry. I'm the first one that will get up here and rant and say the, the federal government should stop funding a lot of crap. Let's just say that right now. Right. I'm, I'm thinking, I, I think most out there would agree that, uh, we're all probably pretty tired of just seeing our, our, our tax dollars funneled into random crap. Right. So, uh, at least tell me how you're spending it. That's what I'd at least like to say. I got some other stronger opinions there that I won't get into here. Um, <laughs> but let's just, let's just start there and say that we probably spend way too much money on a lot of stupid crap and the World Health Organization might be one of those. Things, uh, and especially when we see these things misused, mis, misdone. Um, let's see what, uh, let's see how things go. Uh, I was trying to look to see. I don't know how, oh man, I was trying to read the poll, but it won't let me read the poll. Of course it won't let me read the poll because it probably, um, according to this poll, oh, come on. It never works well for me. Based on 15,327 responses, 43% of folks that have voted in this Microsoft News poll says that, uh, yeah, they really blew it. 43% of folks believe that, that they really blew it. Only 8% say that they're doing great. Uh, 26% go on to say they're doing as well as they can. Uh, 16% says that they have some room for improvement. 8% says not sure, no opinion. And again, 43% uh, says, yep, you know what? They suck. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might, I don't know. I might lean into that, into that opinion too. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly where I stand. I don't want to just say, because I'll be honest with you, I haven't really dug too much into what, who is actually doing. Um, give me some time. I'm sure I'll come up with opinion. Not me, right? Not me. I wouldn't, I wouldn't come up with an opinion on anything, but yeah, pretty, pretty interesting, pretty interesting read. Um, there's just something to go Google and, and read. If you're bored, you can go dig into, uh, Go dig into how who has actually handled things if we ever actually get that <laughs> information. Um, it's pretty sad to me. I'm getting really sick of this stuff. Uh, I've seen some several videos um, shared earlier today where we're basically shaming people who leave the house. And you know what? Ugh. 
F that. There we go. I forget. I have to remember I have a, I have a five year old in the room. Um, <laughs> fortunately she has her headphones over here, but, uh, <laughs> this article basically goes on talking about a mayor's wife who violated a stay at home order, uh, to, to party at an illegally open bar. You lock people in the house. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? Really? What in the hell do you think is going to happen? Right. I'm getting really tired of all the news articles shaming people. How shamey, shamey, shamey. You left the house and it's a mayor's wife. Can you believe it? That they went to an illegally open bar. They, they, they broke the sacred government's rules and went to the bar for a virus that only kills 5% of people that it comes into contact with. 95% of people recover. WTF. I'm tired of people shaming people. It's stupid. It's freaking stupid. That's the only thing that I can say. It's stupid. Unpopular opinion, but it's stupid. That's all I can say. I've seen several videos today of folks that had gathered to go to a church service, and I won't get into religion too much or any of that stuff. Um, I'll just say that I'm extremely open-minded. <laughs> and these poor folks are going to church in something that they believe through, through to their core, and they're only associating with other folks that are in the church with them, right? And then they're going home, and they're basically pulling these people over and shoving cameras in their face going, what are you doing? How could you? How awful are you? You're terrible. You're going to kill my grandma. Assholes. That's all you are. You're a pathetic asshole if you shame people for that stuff. That's all you are. You're a pathetic asshole. That's the only thing that I can say. The five-year-old has on headphones. She can't hear me, so suck it before you even drop it in the comments. <laughs> but, yeah, that's all I can say to you. Stop. Stop. Again, you're trying to think that you can beat people into just staying at home, and then when you when you stay at home – for some of your week, but you get out and you go to Walmart and you do all that stuff and you're the asshole that put your gloves on eating your freaking Cheetos in line, but you're going, <laughs> can you believe those stupid idiots left and went to church? You're an asshole. Oh, can you believe people, the mayor's wife went out and did this and, uh, oh, blah, blah. you're an asshole. That's all I can say. That's all I can say to you. I have to stop cussing now because Avery took her headphones off. So I have to stop for a minute. She's, she's, she's signaling to me that she's going to go potty. It's okay. You can go potty. <laughs> she's she's got to leave the room for just a second. <laughs> But that's all I can say about that. That's really all I can say. There she is. She's going to say hi. That's all I can say. I'm I'm tired of it. I'm tired of the sensationalization of all this crap. I'm tired of people pretending like this is going like this is the like this is the apocalypse. Yeah, baby, it's okay. She's she's telling it's okay. The door's unlocked. It's fine. There you go. <laughs> I'm t- I'm tired of it. I'm totally tired of it. I think it's ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous. We're, we're sitting here throwing on this, 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 this pretend, uh, I'm morally better than you because I locked myself in my home and I did not go to the illegal bar down the street. <sighs> uh, there's much stronger words that I would like to say for those assholes that do that. But you're an asshole. That's all you are. That's completely all, all that you are. Fight me. Jump in the comments. Tell me that I'm wrong. I'm not. Right? Again, <laughs> people, you you cannot just say stay at home and never leave. With we're going to give you this much information on an, on a virus that we know that is this deadly compared to the flu, which is this deadly that you deal with every single freaking year. But then we're going to shame you when you leave the house. Screw you. I'm out of the house right now. Come shame me. See how well it works for you. That's all I got on that rant. Come shame me. See how well that freaking works out for you, right? It's not going to work too well. I promise you that much. But again, I keep seeing all of this stuff happening, and it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy that people keep shaming each other like this, that people keep pretending like they're morally superior just because they haven't left their house in four days other than to go to yoga. Yoga is essential. The bar's not. Right? (laughs) Those are the people that I'm seeing being idiots, right? So I'm sorry. I can't help it. I'm going to yell. I'm going to rant. You're being turds. You're going to, you're being turds. Um, <laughs> did you watch this Chris Kumo video talking about his scary chest x-rays? What an idiot. Sorry. He's an idiot. Don't sit here and vlog me about your scary coronavirus chest x-rays. Screw off. I got to, I got to censor a little bit right now. Sorry, y'all. It's so stupid. This is just getting so stupid. That's all I can say. The more I read coronavirus news, the only thing I can say is it's out of hand and stupid. That's what I shared earlier, and it's a super unpopular opinion. 
super unpopular opinion, but I shared a JP Sears video to my LinkedIn and I've already got some heated hate to, uh, to my, uh, to my, uh, inbox. <laughs> no one has the, uh, the, uh, uh, fortitude to post it in the comments. They, they'll only send it to the, uh, to in messages and in text, right? Um, you're wrong. The government would never lie to us to take away our freedom. <laughs> <laughs> it's only the Chinese, the bad Chinese. But I posted this video talking about, uh, if you know who JP Sears is, awesome. If you don't know who JP Sears is, you should. He's freaking hilarious. But the title of the video is Coronavirus, Why You Should Panic More. And I love the line. He was basically going on in there. I won't give away too much of the video, but he's basically going on in there to say that to the Chinese government, managing the story was much more important than giving the information out. But then it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after that, it's like the American government is more concerned with scaring the shit out of people rather than informing their people. And that's exactly true, right? That's all we care about. We just care about this getting to be the next big thing that we can all write articles about and be, oh, my God, it was so scary. Can you believe it? That's all we care about it being. That's all the news media cares about it being. Just be honest. Right? We all want to pretend like it's this big thing that we survived. Just cut the shit. The headphones are back on, by the way. Again, before I get the, uh, before I get the, the awful comment <laughs> in there. But let's just be honest. So go check it out. I think you should totally go watch this video. That's what I kind of shared is it's unpopular opinion that you'll find more truth in that video than what you'll get from the media or from the government. I think it's, it's a great video. It's, it's one of the best things I've seen in a long time. It gives me a little bit of hope that there are still some folks out there that have some, some brain cells remaining. I think it's awesome. You should, you should definitely go, go check it out. But yeah, I'm getting tired of the articles that go on to talk about shaming people into not staying at home and you're killing my grandma, dude, and all that kind of stuff. I just think it's stupid. Again, I just, I just think it's stupid. There's just so, and it's all that. As I scroll through, it's just all of that. So let's, let's jump into something else. I'm, I'm not going to read the news today. It's too dumb. There's nothing good there. It's just too stupid. That's all I can say. It's just too stupid. So let's go in to this. Let's, let's look at something that's way more important than coronavirus news. Way more important. And that's famous birthdays. At least it's something cool. <laughs> at least it's truthful. <laughs> that might be something <laughs> more than anything else. So today we actually have an amazing one, one of the coolest. Oops, oopsie daisy. If I hit the right thing, that might help. There we go. Jackie Chan turning 66 today. That's pretty cool. Jackie Chan. Um, see who else we got out here that's, that's in this list that looks kind of cool. Russell Crowe, 56. There we go. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, I'm sorry, but, uh, John Cooper of the Christian rock band, Skillet, <laughs> should not be on the famous person list, but he turns 45 today. <laughs> crazy, 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 crazy. Uh, jazz singer Billy Holiday. This is her birthday, but she died in 1959 at the age of 44. Uh, anything else cool? Anybody else cool? Again, you never know with this. The, the way they categorize popularity is ridiculous. Um, just crazy. James Garner. Anything else? Anything else? Not saying anything else. Cool. So there you go. There's today's birthday is much better than anything that you will find on the news at this current state of stupidity that we find ourselves in. So let's jump over to on this day in history. This is one of my most favorite things. I love talking about on this day in history. Uh, it's one of my most favorite segments that I get to do because I'm a nerd. I like the history stuff. It's just stuff that I enjoy doing. So let's take a look and see what's happening on this day in history, history, history. Not a good day. Violence erupts in Rwanda, foreshadowing a genocide. On April 7th, 1994, violence fuels the launch of what would become the worst episode of genocide since World War II. So, again, that's not uh, not a great headline. Uh, if you go to history.com, they have these really cool On This Day in History articles that start with kind of the most major thing and then break things down from there. So, uh, again, I'm a History Channel buff in general. Uh... 
1945, the Japanese battleship Yamato is sunk by Allied forces. Uh, in 1961, JFK lobbies Congress to help save historic sites in Egypt. Lewis and Clark were on the move in 1905, too, there. In 1970, John Wayne, the Duke, wins the Best Actor Oscar in 1970. How cool is that? In 1862, the Battle of Shiloh concludes on this day. Uh President Eisenhower delivers a Cold War domino theory speech in 1954. So that's a pretty cool stuff happening on this day in history, 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 history. So again, I'm browsing through. I'm seeing what's going on out there in the world. Things are stupid. I keep saying that. I, I, I just have to say that it's stupid. That's the only thing that I can say. I don't have anything nice to say today about it. I'm sorry. I hope that you... Uh, I hope that you are handling things much better than uh, what I'm seeing here. Uh, hopefully, you're doing the best that you can, and you're being prepared and not panicked. You're not breaking down on live television over your chest x-rays. <laughs> hopefully, things are going well for you. Um, this is It's just stupid. Everything I see is just so stupid. I can't help but laugh. I, I laugh and I get mad. That's the only two things that I can do. Um, laughing is probably a much better thing. Um, people are panic buying baby chickens. So they moved on from toilet paper, realizing that toilet paper is not very tasty and that it doesn't burn very well. Um, I'm sure there's a way to slow it down. I was thinking about that the other day. You can probably take it and you can probably like soak it in some type of like fat, right? If you took like, like lard or something and probably coated it in that and kind of build it into a bundle. I don't, I don't know what that would do. It seemed like it would have some effect on it. It seems like I remember seeing that somewhere. There's a way to slow down the burn of toilet paper and actually build it into basically like a log. Don't quote me on that. There's another Google search for you, another down the rabbit hole for you. Um, but. What this is basically went on to say that Americans have been flocking to bulk buy toilet paper groceries and cleaning disinfectants like never before. However, the latest purchasing trend has some parts in the country uh, is allegedly uh, a baby chickens, as we said. Uh, in recent weeks, a course of reports have, uh, have harmoniously chirped that people in some places in Utah, Missouri, and Texas are panic buying chickens. Um, according to Food and Wine, the demand is likely driven by the shortage related anxieties. Um, chickens are at least smarter. That's a smarter buy, right? I think that's a much smarter buy than, than panic hoarding toilet paper, at least it seems like. That seems like it might be a little bit smarter, at least. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff with chickens. Chickens can lay eggs. You can make some chicken noodle soup. You can do all kinds of fun stuff with a chicken. You got some feathers there that you can deal with. You got some other stuff there. Chicken seems like a pretty good thing if you want to be uh, preparing yourself when you've got the land and room and kind of all of that stuff to deal with chickens. Seems like chickens might be pretty good. I guess a lot of the argument here is for baby chickens. <laughs> right? I think that's, that's some of the, uh, let's see what else is going on here. It's just, it's just stupid. There's so much stupid on all ends of the spectrum. I'm sorry. Again, we, we pretend like we're going to be able to beat people into compliance with this stuff, that you're going to threaten people with, if you're not isolating yourself, we're going to rip you away from your family and throw you into jail to where you definitely won't be isolated. I don't know. It just seems stupid. I'm sorry. Um, it's It just seems stupid. Everything that I see just continues uh, to be very, very dumb. U.S. coronavirus death toll nears 11,000. So, again, going up a little bit there. Browsing, browsing. With nearly 370,000 cases, the U.S. reports more infections than any other country. President Donald Trump on Monday attributed the highest U.S. high numbers to testing, and I could see that happening. We weren't testing for a very long time, and now all of a sudden we're testing, and we're going, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Right? But we're testing now. Things are, things are obviously going to go up now that we have the means to test. That's one thing I've seen here in Arizona is we, we've seen the, the pop-up testing, drive-through testing kind of stuff happening. Um, I've seen organizations kind of start to partner with, uh, with the universities and kind of other stuff to help in that effort. So it's pretty interesting to see the testing happening at a much more increased rate. So. Kind of cool, kind of cool to see the testing is actually going on at a pretty good clip now. And uh, that's that's a big step 
that's a huge step. And uh, as I scroll through, there's all these advertisements for, we have them in stock, non-contact infrared thermometers. Um, I've seen those used quite a bit. That's a lot of what I've seen going on out there for folks. Uh, I've seen folks doing testing, or testing, symptom checks, health checks. And most organizations are doing those things. Um, I've seen them doing them with FLIR thermal imaging cameras. That's the ones I've been exposed to. I told you I had to, I went out and did some of that over the past uh, little bit, right? I assisted with some of that. So I seen that happening there. Um, I got to hands on work with that stuff and help develop some of that stuff. So I think that's kind of cool. I enjoy that. I'm a nerd, right? I'm a super duper nerd. Um, so I got to help with that a lot and do that kind of stuff. And that was kind of sort of fun. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, but I've also seen quite a bit of the non contact thermometer use too. Understanding how that stuff works is kind of cool. Um, I've also seen some other stuff. Um, some of the stuff that I help track down uh, for an organization if you need some pro tips on this kind of stuff. Um, I don't know what their availability is now, but they also have these things called, I think they were called fever bugs. They're basically temp stickers, right? If you imagine, if you've been in any industrial setting, um, you think about like, a lot of process and a lot of pipes certain have basically temperature stickers that are applied to those. And you can look and see what the pipe temperature is just by browsing at it. They make those for people too, which is pretty cool and a, pretty accurate, right? They have these little stickers and they're, they're designed for kids. They work well on adults, but they come in all these different little handy dandy shapes like lions and power rangers and, and all this kind of stuff, princesses. And you basically go, right. You just kind of go right there. And, uh, It'll tell you, it lights up with a big N if it's normal and it'll tell you the temperature, right? And it'll tell you low, high. It basically has three, four, or five different little temperature bubbles that will light up based on temp and tell you, you know, if you're feverish. And th- those are kind of sort of cool and they continuously read. I'm not advocating that you throw those in your employees and leave them on them, but they are handy if you want something that's pretty accurate and you want something that you can like basically set on the table and non contact with folks, right? Pick up your temp sticker, throw it on your forehead. I can be six foot away or and behind a, or behind a sneeze guard, behind some plexiglass. I can and look at your six to your sticker and tell you that you're not feverish. You can take that with you and you can pick up that wristband and put it on. And we know you've been checked for today. And we have, you know, have you traveled to any of these countries? Have you been on a cruise within the past a little bit? Have you done this? Do you have anybody in your family that's been in contact with COVID-19? Blah, 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 blah. Right. There's a lot of really cool ways that I see folks out there working on this stuff, making this stuff happen. I think it's, it's pretty, pretty neat to see folks out there figuring out how this world functions right now. And that's really what we need a lot more of. Um, kind of getting back to some of my rant here. Rather than, than scaring the shit out of people, rather than continuing to try to make this hyped up way more than what it should be, let's focus in on how can we make this work? How can we fix what we can? How can we control what's inside of our little bubble of influence? What can we do right now to get through today? What can we do to actually create solutions? What can we do to actually chip away at the problem rather than going, oh, my God, (sighs) we're all going to die, right? That is not very helpful. Sorry, it's not. I know it makes for good media. It makes for good stories. It makes for good articles, clickbaity crap out there. It makes for good Facebook posts and LinkedIn posts from what I've seen. But it doesn't really do much for us, right? It doesn't actually help very much. It's still back to that kind of overarching message that I keep trying to share with you. Uh, it's time to help, right? It's time to help not hide. And I'm maybe tag under there. Maybe it's time to help not hide. It's time to not be an asshole that induces unwarranted panic throughout the country. Or within your local group, within your feed. Maybe there we go. That might help out a little bit. <laughs> Narrow things down just a little bit there. But there you go. I know that's an unpopular opinion because as people, we like that. We, we like the, sens- we like the sensationalized things. Um, we like that kind of stuff. We, we just do. It's, it gets us all hyped up and go, Oh my God, living in history. We like that stuff. We're attracted to it. We're so attracted to it, right? You, we can all think about those situations that we've been in as from even when we were knee high until now, right? Thinking about, Oh, that was the worst storm ever. Right, the snowstorm of blah blah blah. Was it really though? Probably not. <laughs> right? We can all think of those situations. We like it being hyped up. We like sharing that stuff. We have to recognize that we do. We have to recognize that we're attracted to that stuff. We're attracted to the scary. We're attracted to the sensationalized. We're attracted to that stuff, and we cannot let that stuff manipulate us. 
that's that's part of it, right? Again, I'm not telling you, I'm not trying to downplay stuff at all. I'm not trying to downplay the recommendations uh, that are out there. I think all that stuff is great. I think we just have to apply it with some some bit of wisdom, right? I think that there needs to be some thought. There needs to be some evidence. We probably need to take a little bit of an evidence-based approach that we haven't yet, right? So uh, that's where most of my rant and stuff circles back to is we need to demand better evidence. We need to demand better data. We just do. We just do. If, if, if this, if, if, if this was a business that we were running, we would be calling bullshit real fast. <laughs> right? Think about it. Think about it. You imagine, and for my safety folks out there, you live with this all the time, but you imagine going to your board, right? Going to some folks out there, going to your leadership team, going to your directors and VPs and all those folks and going, listen, I don't have a lot of information. And there's only a 5% chance that this ends really bad. 95% every time, you know, everything's pretty good, right? And the chance is even smaller that you even have any problem to begin with. And if we do have a problem and there's a 5%, 5% chance that it ends really poorly, um, I want to completely shut down the business for a year. What do you think is going to happen? There you go. There's your answer. We need better evidence. I'm just going to keep saying it. Look, I, I I agree with a lot of the stuff that's going on. I'm not saying I disagree. I'm not. I'm really not. You know, I agree that staying home. I'm staying home. I'm going. I'm going home, and I'm going here. This is it. This is it. Every now and again, we'll swing through Starbucks. <clears throat> I've completely discontinued, and this just tell you my commitment. Here's my commitment to social distancing. I completely quit using Starbucks app because it sucks, right? The, the, the reward system is terrible and it's just awful. You have to spend like $300 to get a free freaking coffee. But I went, even started reusing it again because you basically just purchase, basically you're purchasing Starbucks gift cards through your phone. It's kept in your wallet and you boop, right? If you're not familiar with it. So just so I don't have to transfer cars or touch anything, right? Other than my drinks and they're, they're coming to me gloved now, right? I can just say beep, right? Stay away from me. So I, I'm practicing that stuff. I think it's good. I think it's probably wise to practice that stuff as much as you can. But again, I think we really need to, we don't need to just blindly follow. I have a problem with blindly following anything, whether it's government, whether it's people out there spewing stuff like the media. I just don't think that we, I think we're all too smart to blindly follow. I think we really need to be well read. We need to dig. We need to understand. And again, I always share that with you. Don't listen to me. I'm stupid. I'm an idiot. Uh, go and do your own research. Go and try to understand for yourself what's going on out there in the world. Uh, and again, I, I keep sharing that. I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm not discouraging, you know, following the guidelines. I'm not saying that any of that's right or wrong. Um, what I am saying is that I'm tired of the media sensationalizing stuff, right? I'm, I'm tired of the induced panic because it's, it creates more clicks. I'm tired of that. I'm just tired of it. I'm not going out here making videos going, I've got the cure for COVID. That's a, the, and you see that in the media, practically that, right? You see other stuff, blah, 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 insert any random politician's name based off of which news outlet you're following, which, which political leanings they have, blah, 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 eats children to cure coronavirus. It's, that's all you're reading. And I'm just tired of it, right? So I've tried to share with you stuff that's not, I shared with you yesterday, you know, these 103, 104 year old folks that are kicking coronavirus, kicking COVID 19's ass. I like that stuff. I think that's the stuff that we really need to focus on right now. There's a lot of, of, of negative hype in the world right now. And I think it's time that we really try to focus in on being more positive. Again, helping each other, not hurting. I think that that's really important right now is that we try to help. And not hurt. So that's the biggest stuff I'm going to keep sharing. That's what I really want to keep sharing with you. I think it's super important. I really think it's super important that we, uh, that we keep, that we keep doing that, right? We continue to help and not hide. We continue to try to drive preparedness, not panic for my folks out there that are around safety that are in a profession we are the last ones and here here comes your last rant for the day i'll say that but i'll rant more um, it pisses me off when safety folks are the ones out there spreading panic if you're doing that 
you shouldn't be a safety person. Mic drop. Quit now. You're not good at your job. That simple. It's that simple. You need to be the, the, the calm in this situation. You need to direct people towards information that is valid, towards stuff that Toward, towards stuff where they can actually dig and form their own opinions. You need to point people in the direction of stuff that actually is meaningful. You need to be the calming effect in these crazy situations. Because if you're running around, here comes the redneck, like a chicken with your head cut off, <laughs> and you're the, the leading the pack of panic, you might not need to be in that, that profession. I'm sorry, but you just suck. Right. And I think that we're at a place where we need to really call out some of the shitty professionals that we have out there. Cause there's lots of them. There's lots of them. Let's just be honest. There are lots. I've had this conversation on several of the podcasts. This is a topic that keeps coming up over and over and over because I think during these times we get to start to see a lot of true colors, right? Um, it's interesting. It's interesting. But for my safety people out there, for my peers, I'm calling you out. You need to be part of the solution. You need to be driving preparedness, not panic. You don't need to be out there posting clickbaity crap. Just to try to get a few more likes. It's not helpful. It's not. It's just not. And I haven't seen a lot of it. I will tell you the circles that I run in, um, we, they're awesome. Everybody that I know, if, if you think of people, if you close your eyes and if you follow along with me on LinkedIn, if you think of anybody that's associated with me on LinkedIn, any of those folks that we all kind of run in the same little bubble on LinkedIn, those folks are amazing. They're pumping out quality content. They're pump, they're pumping out stuff that's useful to people. They're out there trying to help and not hide. Um, it's awesome. It's amazing. I, 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 I'm sorry. I keep bragging about this little safety FM family that Dr. J Allen has pulled together. Um, but I see a, it's those folks. They're out there pumping out good stuff. They're out there pumping out good information. They're out there trying to be a voice of reason in this time of crazy. And I like it. I love it. I got to have more of it. I just do. I see some other wacky folks out there that uh, that aren't, <laughs> right? <laughs> and unfortunately, a lot of them are safety people. I guess if you scare the shit out of people, it helps you drive up your consultancy. I don't know. Maybe maybe that's what it is. But I'm proud of the folks that I'm around. I can say that I'm proud of the folks that I'm around, both here in Phoenix, my little group, my little group of professionals and friends and safety folks and hot folks that I know here locally, my big group of folks that I know and interact with regularly. On, uh, on LinkedIn and virtually, uh, I'm proud of those folks that, uh, that I've come to know and love their stuff and care about and, and they're just doing great. But I will tell you, there's a lot out there that are not doing so great of things. Just saying, just saying again, as safety pros, we need to be the calming effect. We need to be the logical voice of reason. We need to drive people towards the evidence. Right. We need to continue to be calm and promote calmness and promote thought and promote innovation and promote adaptability. That's what we need to be doing right now. That's big. That's huge. Again, but here comes the, the your redneck ease coming back in. We can't be running around like a chicken with our head cut off. Right. Because then after the fact, when everybody's looking at us, we're going to be as nervous as a cat in a room full of rocking chairs. Long tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. Right. I guess that's that's the right one. Right, because then everybody's going to know who we really are. We're going to be super nervous. <laughs> so, rants are done. News is done. On this day's history is done. All that kind of stuff is done. Ski. I'm having fun. I hope you're having fun. I hope everything's going super good for you wherever you find yourself. Um, I'm here in the greater Phoenix area. There's our text number again. It's right over there. There's two of them. Woo, look at those. Text us, 480-877-0155. You can give us a call. Uh, I can't even read that one. It's washed out there. I apologize. Call me, 480-712-5219. Super easy ways to get in to touch with us. Um, I'm surprised. I'm so surprised. So I'm, well, I'm not surprised. I bribed. I'll be honest with you. I bribed Avery today. I told her that if uh, she does extremely well here, there she is. She's on the stool. She's watching the TV. She went from the couch to the stool. Look at those wonderful headphones plugged into the TV over here. You can't see it. I told her if she did extremely well today, and I encourage her to come on camera. I always do. Um, I encourage her to come hang out, talk to you guys. I think it's fun. I think it's cool to see, you know, how things, you know, how our home life is going right now. Um, this is normal right now, right? Um, but I told her if she did good, number one, like, like not tinkering with the cameras, 
Right. Not like unplugging stuff. She likes unplugging stuff. She likes, she likes taking the lights and like shining them all over. And she's a kid. She's five. Of course she would. That's like the coolest thing ever. Right. Um, but first she's really good today. We would definitely get to go ride bikes today because we didn't get to go last night because we were here kind of late, which is kind of good. That's kind of okay. But. She's, she's doing this because we're going to get to go ride bikes. She's super excited. So when we get out here in a little bit, we're going to go and we're going to hit trails maybe a little bit. We're going to go ride around Phoenix a little bit. We're going to go have fun. We're going to go get some exercise in. We're trying to, trying to do that stuff right now because, you know, things have been crazy. We've been scrolled away in the house. We want to get out. We want to, we want to go and we want to enjoy some of the outdoors. I think, I think that's kind of what we're going to do today is go get some sunshine. My coffee's almost gone, so you know we're almost done. Uh, <laughs> that's one of the uh, the good indicators here. Again, I want to hear from you. Let me know. Shoot me a text. Even if you're watching this after the fact, jump in. Send us a text. Even if we're not live, you can get a hold of us. 480-877-0155. Let me know what's going on in your world. I'm always interested in hearing how things are treating you. Um, I'm really interested in what you're, what, what lists you're creating. What are you planning on doing when this thing is all said and done? We have a lot of stuff planned already. Um, we were just looking at, like I told you, you know, we're, we're excited to get back to the gym. We're excited to do that we have a couple other hobbies that we're starting to pick up and, and do and kind of have fun with that kind of stuff too, that we're really hoping, you know, we can, we can get into once this thing finally lifts. Unfortunately, the vast majority of our hobbies have to do with like going to the gym and going out in the woods. Like we're, you know, we're going to go do some hunting. That's going to be fun. We're, you know, uh, we're, you know, getting into some, some uh, combat sport type of stuff. I told you I'm in powerlifting and all that kind of stuff. I'm very immobile. Uh, if you've been around powerlifting for a very long amount of time, like I'm just kind of like, like walk like this. Like I was complaining about my elbows because they're not moving a bunch, all that kind of stuff. I've just done it for a really long time uh, and it takes a toll. And so we're looking at some other stuff where we can just get a little movement, do that kind of stuff, get limbered up, you know, um, all that kind of fun stuff. So that's kind of what we're planning on doing. I'd love to hear from you. When the world goes back to some level of normal, what are you planning on doing? I'd love to hear your story right there. You go for you know, eight, seven, seven, zero, one, five, five. Even if we're off the air, give us a call, shoot us a text, let us know what your thoughts are because I would love to share it with everybody out there. We can all kind of swap ideas on what's going to happen when the world is not mid apocalypse. I look forward. I look forward to that. That's going to be so amazing when we finally, finally get done with this thing. But I think that's all I've got. I'm going to wrap it up here today. I've been having so much fun. Can I just tell you that? I've just been having so much fun spending time with you. It's just a blast. It is just an absolute blast for me to get to have this conversation with you, to get to come down here to the, the wonderful, the wonderful Hop Nerd Studios. I mean, can we just, can we just take that in for a second? Look at that. You're only seeing my little, my little corner here. That's the set. But this is the wonderful Hop Nerd Studios. You kind of see it over here in the corner. We're continuing to work on this thing. This is my, this is my little tinker shop. This is where I come. This is where I hang out. I'll work on stuff. I'll build little contraptions to take, you know, my little rigs to take with me on the road here and there once all this kind of goes down, you know, built up all this kind of stuff to be able to record on the road and kind of do all this kind of fun stuff. But this is, this is their little shop. This is where we hang out. It's not big. It's not massive. It's just a small little studio, you know, that we get to come here and hang out and, and, and broadcast to you from. Um, but yeah, it's just great, right? Let's just take this in for a second. I can't wait to be able to bring you here, right? Those folks out there uh, that I want to talk to, I can't wait. I'm working on that. Uh, it's it's just going to be, you know, and I think during these live streams, we're just going to just throw that in there. I don't think I'm going to be, I don't think it's going to be separate. I think this is going to be part of this, just the hot in there live stream. It's just going to be talking to interesting people, whether they're safety related or not. Uh, obviously, a bunch of my, a bunch of my friends are hop nerds, fellow hop nerds and hop practitioners and hop evangelists and kind of all of that stuff and safety people and leaders and managers and kind of all of that stuff. That's, that's most of the folks that, that I kind of congregate with. So you'll probably get a bunch of that, but I don't want to, I don't want to put, I don't want to pigeonhole it. I don't want to really limit it. I want to just throw that out there and say that if you're an interesting person or if you know of an interesting person I should have on, um, Especially if they're here in the greater Phoenix area, how, why not, right? There's, there's only five million people here. We can find somebody cool to talk to, I'm sure. Um, I think that'd be, that'd be phenomenal. When all this clears up, if you're traveling, if you're coming through the Phoenix area, um, it's kind of stinks. I was, I noticed that. I was thinking about that today. Um, some of my, uh, some of my friends that I communicate with over in the UK, there are some of those that were going to be coming to Phoenix, uh, I think here this month that I'm sure is canceled. (laughs) 
at the moment. I was really looking forward to getting to hang out with them and have some fun. That would have been a blast. But unfortunately, that's probably not going to happen. There's going to be a rain check there. Um, but yeah, it, as this thing starts to lift, if you know of anybody, if you are a very interesting person and you are going to be in the greater Phoenix area at any time, drop in the email there, sam at thehopnerd.com or the hopner at gmail.com. Slide into the DMs. Uh, and let me know. I would love to have you here once things actually uh, get back to some level of normal. It's going to be so much fun uh, to have folks here in the studio. You're gonna, I think you're really going to enjoy where this live stream continues to go. It's going to get better and better and better. That's that's my goal, at least. Just continuing to increase the quality and provide you with quality content. That is our goal here. Our ultimate goal is to make the world a better place to work. And I believe we do that through continuing these conversations. Let's just throw that out there as the overarching goal goal is to make the world a better place to work. That simple. And I, I, I keep saying that. I think we do that through having conversations with each other, with arguing sometimes, with getting mad. That's probably not bad either, right? I think it's good to have dissent and dissenting voices and 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 squabble and, and all that kind of stuff. It's good to debate those ideas. It's good to feel our way through this thing. It's good to challenge. It's good to realize the good and the bad and keep the good and ditch the bad and realize that the good might not always be good and it might have a sunset on it, right? Uh, and it's just neat. It's just very, very neat. That, that we, I'm in this position to have this conversation with you and I'm thankful, very, very thankful that we get to continue to have this conversation. I thank you for joining me. I thank you for allowing me to be your temporary tour guide to the apocalypse. Thank you for coming here to hang out. I really appreciate it. I really do. You're amazing. I love it. I love you guys. I hope you're doing well. If you need anything from me, you know how to get a hold of me, right? It's right there. Look, it's right there. That's how you can get a hold of me. 480-770-155. Give us a call. 480-712-5219. I always love it when you call and text in live, but if you can't get me, if we're off the air, jump in later. It's really easy to get a hold of me. Uh, and if it's something you want on the show, We'll share it on the show. It's pretty cool, right? So there you go. That's all I've got for today. It is Sam Goodman, the Hop Nerd. I'm signing off. Uh, she doesn't even realize this, but she's going to say bye from over there on the stool. She's uh, she's enjoying her her Disney stuff right now. She's uh, I, I was going to say that she could tell you bye, but she's not. There she is. She's <laughs> bring the Avery. Bring the Avery to work. I don't know if I can get it to. There we go. I'm trying to browse through some different angles. I, I don't know which angles I've got. There we go. But that's it. That's all we've got. Avery saying bye. She would say bye, but she's hanging out over there. That's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can't say that enough. I truly appreciate you. I always appreciate you. Get into contact. Let us know uh, what's on your mind, all that stuff. Make sure you head over to the website, www.thehopnerd.com. Follow us along on all things social media. Again, you got that email, all that other kind of stuff. Easy. We're easy to get a hold of. I'm easy to get a hold of. Um, and let me know what's going on in your world. I look forward to talking to you tomorrow. We'll do this thing live again from the Hop Nerd Studios tomorrow. We're doing this thing every single day until I don't feel like doing it anymore. That's, that's the only, uh, that's the only caveat there is I'm going to keep doing it live as long as I feel like doing it every day live. Our normal shows are Wednesdays at five, Fridays at eight. That's the normal schedule. That's subject to change, but that's what we've got planned right now. That's what we're going to continue on. Um, if you got any input, if you'd like to see this thing at a different time, if you think there's a smarter time for me to do it, let me know. I'm always open to your input. I love it. I like it. I got to have more of it. But that's my very long sign off. That's all I've got. I'm getting out of here. I'm going to work on some other stuff. I'm going to finish stuff up here in the studios. We're going to do some cleanup. We're going to do some housekeeping. We're going to do some sanitization of the surfaces here. And uh, then we're going to head back and lock ourselves in the house. And then that's it. That's all we got. Then we're done. We're going home. That's all I've got. I just want to tell everybody bye. Avery, you want to come over and say bye to everybody? Where can you flip the camera? Here, I'll turn, I'll, here, I'll turn it around to you. You stay right where you're at. You stay right where you're at. She, she suddenly took the headphones off. So let me see if I can find where it's at. Is that you? There you are. Everybody can see you. Say bye. Wave everybody. Bye. Avery, say it loud. Bye.
There you go. Well, that is all we've got for today. Thank you once again for joining us. I will catch you tomorrow, probably around the same time, I would say. We'll see. I told you they're coming here working on a bunch of crap, so if they're in here working, it's hard for me to live stream. We'll do it when we can, but I'll throw something out there. You'll see. I'll give you some input on when we're going to go live. That's all I've got. This is Sam Grubman, your tour guide of the apocalypse, the hop nerd, signing off. Bye, everybody. Bye. Are you looking for OSHA 10 or 30 hour training for yourself or your organization? Head over to hominum, H-O-M-I-N-U-M, H-P-I.com. That's hominum, H-P-I.com. They offer OSHA 10 and 30 hour outreach training on a regular basis in the greater Phoenix area. They also offer all kinds of other general safety and compliance services along with their specialty, human and organizational performance and human performance improvement. Again, head over to hominum, H-O-M-I-N-U-M, H-P-I.com, or send an email to phxosha at gmail.com.